15 minutes of fame. And reality TV is a perfect example of that. I mean, we've gone to an extreme uh, kind of situation now where anybody will do anything to get noticed. And, uh, you know, my feeling is that uh, the desire to express is very different than that. Being able to, um, to have something to say and wanting to say it so badly that your craft is in service. Your craft has to run to catch up with that thing that you want to say. That's very different than, you know, uh, trying to get somebody's attention by shocking them or by, uh, by being externally different. Uh, I'm going to create a new way to push pain around to differentiate myself from someone else. And like I say, I, you know, I, I believe uh, greatly that the hardest thing is to speak the most profound individual truth in the most common language. Creating one's own language, uh, to me, is, uh, is a very easy way to separate yourself out from the crowd. And, uh, and to me, it's a little too easy. And, you know, uh, the, the greats, historically speaking, have not only had an authentic, you know, uh, sense of vision, you know, if you have a chance to witness the unfinished um, uh, slaves by Michelangelo in the Gallery d'Academia in Florence, if it doesn't bring a tear to your eye, you don't have a heart beating in your chest. I mean, they're... Uh, they're so profound. There's not a wasted chisel mark, and everything is in service of everything else. It's a complete, uh, completely subordinated to, to a singular sense of vision. He's not wandering around deciding what it is he wants to talk about, and and the work resonates on every level, from the most sophisticated eye to the the, the smallest child can appreciate what's there. And to me, that's that's amazing to speak something. That individual in that kind of a universal sense is that's profound. You touched on something that called to mind one of my favorite quotes by Arnold Patton. He said, "If you genuinely have something to say, there is someone who genuinely needs to hear it." I love that quote. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, and 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 to me, that's what it comes down to. That, that whether it's art or it's people or anything else or music, for that matter. And, and a, a real authentic sensibility is there always. Now, the problem with being authentic is simply this. The public may come to it or may not come to it. And that's the choice we make as artists, whether you're a writer or anything else. And there's a lot of people who, who uh, have gone uh, more commercial routes with their work because they have to make a living or they, have, they make a choice, uh, uh, you know, uh, because... Uh, it's important to, you know, feed the family, do whatever you have to do. Now, I understand all that. I have a family, you know, and I've been blessed that I've been able to support a family with my teaching and my painting. And by, by having a, a pretty rigid vision about, you know, what's meaningful to me, and uh, I'm really kind of a pill, actually, with the galleries, and the people get frustrated with me periodically because I... I don't give them what they want. I give them something that was meaningful to me to do. And um, to me, that, no matter what, that has resonance. Now, but people have a very solid idea of what art is. They have a solid idea of what the written word should be. There are formulas to things. There are uh, forms to the way people think something should be. And, you know, when, when music is authentic, whether you listen to Mozart or you listen to Van Morrison, uh, it doesn't matter. They're singular. And their work is absolutely singular. So how does one do that? It just takes great courage. They've been fortunate enough that they, they were able to find something that was meaningful to them and the world came to them. What I tell my students now is I say, when they say, can you teach me how to make a living? And I said, hell no, I can't teach you to make a living. I can teach you to feed your soul. I can make you aware, actually, teaching. I don't believe you teach anybody anything. You can make them aware of something, whether they come to it or not. It is wholly up to them. But, um, but it, when you feed your soul, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to feed your stomach. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, and like I said, I've just been fortunate that, uh, and very grateful that I've been able to get by uh, having a, a, a personal sense of things. Um, and so, I, you know, like I said, whether it's the written word, or, you, know, you read Rilke, and I would recommend anybody that's hearing this who is involved with creativity to read those first three pages of Letters to a Young Poet. You know, everything in there, it resonates, and it's very powerful. Or you read uh, um, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson's essays on self-reliance, and he says that he's saying the same things. And they're very, they, they, in times where you're feeling particularly low, uh, that people don't appreciate what you're doing, and 
you know, blah, blah, blah. We all hear that. Um, it's nice to hear the words of, of somebody that are so clear, so, you know, have such uh, resonance. And it reminds us that we, we all have something individual. And, um, and like I said, we, we're living in a world now where people don't pay too much attention for more than five or six seconds at a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to ask someone to look at a painting or to read a book uh, seems to be getting harder and harder to do. So I think uh, uh, I can't think too much about that. I can't think too much about the way the world is going. All I can think about is what's meaningful to me. And, and to paint my time as an artist, to represent the world that I live in, not a romance of the past, not some derivative path that was cut by someone else, but to do something that is meaningful to me that will leave something behind from the time that I was here. Now, what's going to happen to all that? Who knows? Like I said, I've just been lucky enough that I can, I can get by. And uh, you know, I'm very grateful for that. I can take care of my wife and my kids. And, and, uh, and uh, I've had the uh, good fortune to help a lot of people coming up with their work and uh, to try to uh, set the bar high, I guess I'd say. And you know, the problem with motivation is uh, we are all tempted. You know, we're all tempted. And if the gallery says to you, you know what? I could sell 10 of these if you gave me 10 of these. Well, if you have a family support and your bills to pay, what are you going to say? You know? And the last time someone said that to me, <laughs> quite honestly, and it was a lovely man, I said, uh, with all due respect, please don't say that to me. You know, I just, you know, I've been, you know, it takes a long time to try to, to, try to find that thing that's yours. And, uh, and like I said, to do it authentically, naturally, go out into the world and let the world come in. You know, if you, if as a writer, your head is in other books all the time, you're, you're, you're basically clouding yourself with the form of other people. You know, this form and content of others. And, and believe me, I respect what's come before, and I have a great regard for it. But the world that's out there, whatever that's, whatever's for, for me to explore, is, is, is for me to do, for me to get out and taste it and touch it and smell it. And as a landscape painter, mostly, from life, you know, you're in it. And uh, Minnesota in January is no pleasant place to be in, uh, outside, except that you see things that are singular. And if I'm going to live in Minnesota, well, I'll paint Minnesota. You know, I paint the east and west coast as well. But, you know, um, that idea of finding the Grand Canyon in your own backyard, I think, is big. You know, continually not having to, uh, not having to uh, find something bigger and better to impress people. The beauty is what you bring to something. Subject becomes secondary, you know. And the Rilke talks about that. He said to the writer, "Avoid at first love poems, you know, where it takes a fully matured power to bring something new to a to a a, a form that is so common." And uh, and so you know, when I when I teach my classes, I'll say, you know, get out there. If you're you know, if you're a portrait painter, you know, you got to get to know people. Photography is a lousy excuse for an experience, you know, and uh, th- this uh, uh, photography itself is, is a machine, it's a camera, you know, the, the camera has a very one-sided viewpoint of something and it, you don't get the intensity of encounter with the camera. You know, you can, int- you can talk all about, you can have Spock come in and tell you about the chemistry behind a hug and what it means and exactly what happens when the neurons fire and the endorphins go here and this happens and that happens, but the fact is when your child comes up and wraps their arms around you for the first time and gives you an unbidden hug, that has a power and a resonance to it that no explanation can ever have. Mm -hmm. And so to me that essence of experience, that feeling, that deep feeling that is connected with saying something, those things need to exist. And most externally motivated things exclude that, especially in the 20th century. Art's been very psychological. Uh, there's a lot of concept out there. And I love a good idea as much as the next person. But ideas don't keep you warm at night. Right. You know, 